So now, as we know, and we continue to talk about incident response, let's jump into playbooks. So we know that incident response at times is very challenging. It's overwhelming. It can be very costly. It can affect businesses' reputation if things are not done correctly. Uh, it's scary and it's highly, highly emotional sometimes and stressful, right? So um, we've got people barking down our necks to 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 bring the systems back online if things are not being tested correctly. And, you know, there, there's been often times where things don't go as planned. So we want to make sure that when we're dealing with incident response, we've got our proper methodologies and process assigned to our environmental and business requirements. So let's jump and talk in, let's jump and talk about incident response playbooks and the needs and requirements and why these things are so popular nowadays. And basically, these playbooks help us to streamline our incident response process, right? It defines our challenges that are associated with incident response. And then we can go away and build out step-by-step -step processes and instructions, essentially, that can give us on how we best support our incident response process. So typically, incident response playbooks are a step-by-step -step process. Now, I've involved and I've been, you know, I've done and created some incident response playbooks in the past. And these things can range from, excuse me, maybe, you know, 20 pages or so where you've got a very defined and very, you know, role responsibility, outcome requirement, you know, and a very detailed definition of how we're going to handle our incident response, um, our incident response based on a specific type of event category, right? So we can go away and go, okay, well, now we need to create an incident response playbook based on phishing. And then we have to understand how the phishing could potentially happen. And then we'll go away and create this document. And then from there, you can also have flow charts. And then inside the flow charts, it kind of just shows you a bit of a step. You know, you can start here, and then you kind of go this way and then has this been defined or not? And then you can go down this way if it hasn't been defined and you do X activity and then you sort of start back here until you get to the yes and you've done it and you've gone this way and then now here and has this been identified or not? Have you done X, Y, Z? And it's sort of a flow essentially into how you're going to handle your phishing event category of that specific incident. So with playbooks, think of these as step-by-step -step instructions, essentially, and they kind of help us uh, dive into, or well, basically per incident, essentially, and we look at you know how we go away and uh, support that process based on the eight event category that we've defined. Um, the other thing is with incident response playbooks, there's typically four areas, like we mentioned before, around our incident response, um, you know, our incident response uh, methodology and the process itself. Uh, there's four type of common and, and, you know, not so common, but I kind of rule these out in four common areas around incident response. Things like analysis is one of them. Uh, it could also involve containment, always involves containment. Um, and then to others also, as I'm just trying to think of this, recovery, right? And then your post-incident reviews, so your lessons learned. Um, and then it's sort of took four typical phases around our incident response playbooks. Now, all these can sort of happen at different phases. Obviously, you're not going to do your recovery first or your lessons learned. Typically, your analysis and containment sometimes can alter, and we're going to cover a couple of these in, the, in some examples that we're going to cover together. So typically, we'll go through that process around analysis, containing it, recovering, how we can obviously re effectively recover, and then lessons learned. So our post-incident review. And again, how things could have been better um, and then scrutinizing every bit across that, you know, the process of, of our incident response methodology. So typically the incident response team isn't involved in the incident until it's obviously been declared as an incident. So typically at this point, you know, the triaging has been done. And then obviously then we involve our incident response team to either go away, we can develop these after the incident. So let's go look at some typical incident response playbooks and how they kind of look out. So I've got a triangle here that we're going to sort of walk through this in, in just a moment. Um, and in this example, we're going to talk about a potential event category such as data exfil. So if we're talking about data exfiltration, that's just basically taking data out or data that's leaving the organization, right? So we have to prepare for this type of event, 
or this type of incident that occurs inside our organization. So someone has typically gotten into the business, maybe a physical component and maybe unauthorized access, and now they're taking out that data. So let's brainstorm this together. Um, I wanna keep this quite open and, and not really rigid. Uh, and then you can start to see the different phases here, as I've mentioned, these sort of four areas, the analysis, containment, recovery, and lessons learned, how they alter between the different types of, of playbooks that we sort of create. So. As we do data exfil, um, well, the first thing is we need to uh, identify, right? So what, what what on earth has happened? So for me in this phase, I would start doing some sort of analysis, right? In analysis, we'll look at IOCs or potential indicators of compromise, basically what happened uh, and define very specifically, well, what actually did occur? Was this maybe an external source that was communicating with something? Was it an internal source communicating with something externally? And we have to define what they are. Are there certain maybe ports, maybe certain protocols are associated with this exfil uh, and define what they are. Are these maybe common services? Maybe it's DNS, maybe it's HTTP. Uh, who knows, maybe certain port that's associated with those things as well. Uh, is this user account activity? You know, is there a user account that's potentially or a service account that's associated with that XFIL attempt, right? So uh, again, is that user account running? Is it running a certain service? Is the account associated with, again, that specific service? So we're basically looking at the scope and the extent of what's going on. So again, we can also look at things like logs as well. So our, is our logging and infrastructure firstly working? Um, you know, we may look at things like when did it start? Um, maybe things like, you know, um, what data is the account looking at? Because the data is maybe being sent in or out. So maybe data could be something that we can maybe look at. So is it a specific, um, you know, is it maybe a PDF? Maybe is it an Excel document? Is it something entirely different, right? We have to define what type of data is it sending out or potentially going to be sending out if we haven't maybe defined what that looks like right now. Uh, and again, we may have to look at things like, well, what data has also been compromised, if any? Right, so in this analysis phase, we're, quite, we're, quite, we're doing all our leg all our a lot of our investigation right like the detective were going there we're kind of looking at well what's been compromised in this specific part is it sensitive is there compliance that needs to, to be involved at any any part of that process uh, and then obviously check the other systems as well and check the other logs of the systems to see if they have been talking with maybe those external resources as well or those external assets that are potentially doing that exfil so uh, again we're kind of analyzing we're kind of defining um, and obviously looking at the different, again, the ports as well, they're associated with that. So, and then we can begin to, you know, go up the ladder. So the next part from here would be something like our containment. So now that we've defined what is going on in the environment, we can go away and um, contain. So I just want to add something else to the analysis phase before I continue. So analysis, think of this as the scope. And this is something that I mentioned before. We need to define the extent of, that's a lot of words, of the incident. Very clearly and very definitive, right? We have we can't make an assumption. It has to be quite factual. So we'll have to look at all indicators of potential compromise and go through this very method, methodolo methodological or method methodically across the environment. So Containment as we continue up this ladder is the next part. So this could be involving something like isolating the hosts or hosts, you know, the host or hosts in the environment. Um, and typically maybe there would be some type of malware that's sending out the data. So beware of maybe some sort of malware or some sort of uh, malware on system, right? That could be doing something as well. So we have to contain that part of that process. Now, as we continue up, what, what would our recovery look like? Now, this could be something like maybe rule sets. Do we have to uh, apply any rule sets to maybe our endpoints for our users, right? Maybe it could be IDS or IPS systems, right? Could be our UTMs or firewalls as well. Uh, it could be dealing with that external IP address. So, so making sure, obviously, those URLs uh, that are associated with that. So I'm just going to say URL. So we might have to block that 
access along with the ports associated with that uh, or investigate further. So obviously during our analysis, we understand what that looks like. Um, then we may have to reset the password accounts as well. So I'm gonna put reset password. If any accounts or service accounts have been affected or being part of that X full of the data component, uh, and then typically we'll have to go to do some sort of restoration, right, from backup. So we may have to go to a point of time. So if we're sort of operating here, we have to go to a point before the incident happened and then obviously restore and recover from that point of that backup. So we obviously have to make sure our backups work and we can, in fact, in fact get a copy of that data to restore and recover from, uh, obviously, um, ensuring there's no business impact either. So from our recovery, we've gone through that process. And then as we continue up is our lessons learned. And in here, obviously, we're going to go through and define did our methodologies work correctly? Tool sets? Was it training? Right? What could have been better? And that's the ultimate uh, the ultimate lesson here is, well, what could have been better? And every part of this phase as well, again, depending on um, your business appetite, your business requirements, all these asterisks here is our communications. Comes to our business units, our teams, our environmental people. Maybe we've got certain stakeholders that we have to keep informed. Uh, and then I'll do also another video on stakeholder management as well, so we can define what that looks like uh, and then who other people may be potentially involved in that. So if you haven't defined that, that's probably a, a good place to start to define who are the stakeholders in, in our environment and then effectively communicate along with, you know, calls. Maybe you have to call them, maybe it's an email, maybe there's a whole other process that the business has to go through to formally communicate uh, these sort of issues. So. Again, so when we talk about lessons learned, we're going through and reviewing our incident response procedures, we're meeting our organizational needs and obviously communicating. So that's typically a playbook sort of as we sort of brainstorm this as a whole. Uh, in the next video, I'm gonna cover two other playbooks. So we're gonna look at something like phishing, a phishing assessment, and also we'll take a look at doing something, um, something else as well, something similar to, I'm just trying to think, what else we can probably do. And that could be something like a ransomware playbook. So stay tuned for the next video. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If there's any other feedback that you'd like to see, please let me know. And as always, hope to see you in the next video series. Bye for now.